Let me get everything all queued up and we will start the show. I want to thank you for tuning in as I get everything onto the... I'm syncing all the cameras in case you wonder what I am doing here. It's run on the Media Speaks on Facebook and of course on the High Def. Once Facebook goes live, friends, we go live. And that's going to be mere seconds. Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Sam I.B. the Ganji doing political commentary for the media speaks. You might know me from Blasting News or Wits News. I have a new article up on Blasting News. It's about the Electoral College and how it actually adds to fairness. It's one of the few topics, politically speaking, that I've ever changed my mind on over time. And the reason is in that article. Also, as I give people a moment to check in before all the dumb dumbies come, and believe me, they are coming in droves, the first one is going to make you cringe. Ugh. Um, I want to say that I'm going to be going to the Faster Pussycat show they're playing with Bang Tango, and uh, many of you know I also love industrial music, along with uh, kind of old-school 80s rock like they are. Hey, Tom, you know who Faster Pussycat is. Well, I'm going to be talking to them, and uh, interviewing, I think so, I think I'm talking to them. I'm definitely going and reviewing the show for Blasting News, and many of you may know the Newly Deads. The Newly Deads were an industrial project that sounds very much like Skinny Puppy, uh, Nine Inch Nails, uh, Cuban 8, that, that sort of heavy electro. They're in a band called the Newly Deads, and I'm excited because I didn't expect to hear any Newly Deads songs for the Fast and Pussycat show. But then I was doing some research and catching up on them and found out that, uh, yeah, they do still do Newly Dead songs on tour. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to that. Look for that article. And I'm sure I know why you tuned in. So, yes, I'm getting to it. I wanted to let everyone trickle in. Yes, I'm getting to it. The Dunce Cap of the Month show. For those of you that do not know, we cover the stupidest people. Governments or anyone else, you're not going to believe who I gave the Dunce Cap of the Month to this time. I did it once before. Men in Black are going to be at my door taking me away. No, I do want to say it is a political commentary and meant as a threat to no one. But every month we go through the stupidest stories that can be found, and I bring them to you. I have to read countless idiots, endless, countless numbers of idiots, just to make sure I find you the stupidest people every month. How about this, friends? The smoking gun. <clears throat> Health alert issued after Michigan doctor charged with reusing devices inserted into patients. Now, some people say that I'm not the the happiest person in the whole world sometimes, but I'll tell you what, I'm a whole lot happier than this doctor would be if I got his hands, if I got my hands on him, if he had done something like this to me, may I never need it done. Listen to this. Health officials are encouraging patients in Michigan of a doctor uh, <clears throat> who they consider, read, redo, health officials are encouraging patients of a Michigan doctor to consider HIV and hepatitis testing after state investigators charged that the physician re reused rectal devices at his Kalamazoo area clinic. So up the gazoo in Kalamazoo with things that shouldn't be reused. That's my rap. The State Department of Health and Human Services yesterday issued the testing guidance for patients of Dr. Roger Bayer, who owns Urological Solutions of Michigan and Women's Health Care Specialists. So God only knows what else he's reused or what he has stuffed in other orifices over and over again on different people. The disciplinary complaint against Bayer, who is pictured in this on the right. Let me go to screen share here for my uh, media speaks people. There you go. Enjoy. That, that's the good doctor right there. And uh, beautiful. Alleged that Bayer's practices reused rectal pressure sensors, despite the fact that the device is only approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for single patient use. <coughs> now, I don't exactly have abundant faith in the FDA, but I'm going to side with them on this one. 
The disciplinary complaint against, oh, I'm sorry, I, uh, one nurse estimated that a sensor, quote, was used over 100 times before being replaced, end quote. A second nurse said that the device was cleaned occasionally and reused on multiple patients. So, not only did he, I promised you a cringe, not only did he reuse the, uh, the rectors, rectal sensors, but he washed them only occasionally. What a man. She then was trained to place the device in a non-latex glove before inserting it into the patient. The device's manufacturer, Prometheus Group, there you go. Where is he? There you my alien behind me. There you can see him. Yes. All right. Uh, I hated Prometheus, by the way, but I digress. It includes a warning in the packaging alerting practitioners that the device is meant for single patient use, the complaint notes. The complaint charges buyer, it says, with negligence, failing to conform to minimal standards of acceptable prevailing practice for the health professions and adulterating a medical device, hence the glove. According to buyer's website, he is board certified OBGYN and urogynecology and is internationally recognized as an expert in the pelvic floor and his highly regarded pelvic floor surgeon. So there you go from the highly regarded man. Now I get you know we all know that the latex late to non-latex glove will prevent any slight bit of HIV, you know, from escaping. There's not a chance of it. That must have been what he was thinking. I told you it's the dunce cap of the month. We have uh, three more absolute idiots before we get to the winner, which is just mind blowing. It, it involves millions of dollars being thrown away. Um, this is from <clears throat> scmp.com, the South China Morning Post. Chinese airport warns passengers throwing coins at planes were harm prayers for a safe trip. Now, not only does, this isn't just a story about superstition, although it is, but it's bigger than that. This is what links this communist nation will go. It will use the superstitions of the nation in order to not have to take a hard look at the things which are actually causing the problems which are being addressed here. Listen to this. It's loading very slowly, so you may not want to go to the page yourself. An airport on a tropical <clears throat> Hainan Island has become the first in China to put up notice warning passengers not to throw coins at planes to pray for a safe trip after numerous incidents have delayed flights across the country. An image circulating online Sunday showed the warning displayed on a sign. It's still loading slowly. Warning passengers that displayed a screen located before the security check area at Phoenix International Airport in Sanya. It warned passengers that tossing coins at a plane was not only against the law, but it would also harm their prayers for protection. We respectfully inform you that tossing coins at a plane to pray for good fortune is illegal, and it also violates the aviation safety code and will harm the blessings. So, the leaders of China, you see, they have a direct line on how this works. So all the people that think that it brings luck, <clears throat> the Chinese government can't possibly be wrong. It has to be you that's wrong, because that's how big government works. So shouldn't we have it in America? You know, it very well could uh, also mean a good crop. Who knows? But China would know, because their leaders <clears throat> talk to God. An English translation of the notice read simply, it is illegal to throw money into an airplane to pray for good luck. It said the airport told Shanghai-based news, the outlet on the paper, that the messenger was no longer displayed because it was being revised. So now they're wasting money. I told you it's the dunce cap of the month show. Now they're wasting valuable time and money by paying people to look at whether or not this idea was a good idea. The warning has been taken down while it is amended, and the English translation might be scrapped. It will go up again once it has been adjusted, an airport employee who was not identified was quoted as saying. So, 
you keep paying more and more for your flights on South China Air because they're spending lots of their board meeting time and advertising time, sign making sign, uh, programming any message on an electric sign, uh, taking signs up, putting signs down. They're spending valuable money on that. <laughs> You got to wonder, friends, what goes through their minds. Um, needless to say, it says that there's been court cases regarding the crashes and delays and various things. And it's all tied, you know, to the throwing of coins. So look it up if you want to. I'm got, the uh, site itself is loading slower than molasses in January, so you know what that means around here. It gets dangerous. Uh, American Mirror. Now, this, 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 was, this was a good one, because we all know first and foremost... We all, let's say it together. Man-made global warming is a lie. We have proven it time and time and time again. Did you see just recently, speaking of dunce caps and idiots, did you see just recently they posted a, the left posted this image of a giant elf, uh, ice shelf breaking away from the continent. It's June. That has happened every June. In recorded history, it happens every June, and it grows back by every December. Imagine that. Yes, it does get warm enough, and has always gotten warm enough in the ice caps for that to happen. So anyway, knowing none of that, we have this idiot here, Emma Thompson. Actress Emma Thompson generates 1.67 tons of CO2 on a 5,456-mile flight to join a climate protest. This is also listed on Prison Planet. It's an American Mirror, Mirror, American Mirror article. Now let's pretend, and then this is hard. You have to lose a few brain cells just to do this. But let's pretend for a moment that global warming is real. I know it's easier to believe that the tooth fairy dancing on the head of a pin is real, but let's just go with it. In the 2005 film Stranger Than Fiction, British actress Emma Thompson plays an author who controls man's fate and saves him from tragedy. I need her. But some suggest that the movie title could also apply to Thompson's real life as a climate change alarmist who has no issue with taking a gas-guzzling jet thousands of miles to protesters demanding strict limits on air travel. So not only did she go to a global warming shindig, but she went specifically to a global warming shindig that wants to limit air travel by spending a fortune on air travel. Hypocrite Emma Thompson flew 5,400 miles from Los Angeles to join London Eco, the London Eco Warrior protest, the Sun posted on Twitter. The UK news site detailed the Oscar-winning actress 5,456 mile Transatlantic flight Wednesday from Los Angeles to London's Heathrow Airport, where the climate activist group Extinction Rebellion attempted to shut down travel the next day over concerns about the environmental impact. Do you see why you listen to the dunce cap of the mother? Do you see it? The group's leader, Robin Boardman Patterson, a, a, a drill genius, told Gia Fox uh, the protest to ruin the Easter weekend for 800,000 people was totally necessary given the emergency we're in. The move was part of a larger citywide rebellion that lasted for days. Now, keep in mind here that the importance of other people's holiday for Easter doesn't matter. Their travel can be banned. However, Emma Thompson, who wasn't even going to, on a, uh, anything to celebrate a religious holiday, is not to be banned under any circumstances because she's traveling to protest travel and then, of course, traveling back. Among other demands, Extinction Rebellion wants the government to impose limits on air travel for emergencies only to reduce greenhouse gases and the impact on the environment. I am so proud to be part of Instinct Rebellion, a new movement that has come behind all the ones that I had been part of since I was 16 years old, she said. The movement that's telling it like it is and saying to government, look, there's no more time. 
You can't lie, and you can't stall any longer. The only person lying is you. The trouble is lie doesn't completely apply because you're probably too stupid to realize that you're lying. That's why you're on the Dunce Cap of the Month show right now, Miss Thompson. She posed in black overalls. You should see her whiny looking face on her. Thompson Spokeman didn't see the irony in the actress jetting across the world to complain about global warming. She had to fly home at any rate. It was just earlier than she thought she could have, the spokesman told the mail, Daily Mail. At the moment, that is our only available and practical means of global travel. Yeah, because we don't have boats. We don't have boats, Emma Thompson. You couldn't have used a boat. Your spokesperson's as dumb as you are. Her spokesperson just said that the only means of travel was flight. Because boats aren't reliable. Leonardo DiCaprio, we mentioned that before, has done likewise. Make sure you look at the article. It's, like I said, it's on the mirror. All right, guys, the runner-up for the Dubs Cap of the Month show. A winner from P. Joseph Watson. P.J. Dub, Paul Joseph, Prison Planet. Historical mural removed from school because it only features white children. Have you noticed that it's perfectly okay to be against the white race. And people question me about it from time to time because I, my mother was very, very white, but my dad was Mexican and Italian Sicilian. So clearly by looking at me, there's a higher than likelihood that there's a Native, a, a Native a Indian in me, South American Indian, not Native American. Um, I've never been the DNA tested, so I don't want to be Pocahontas here saying that uh, I am, but it, Look at me, you can probably pretty much tell. Uh, my point is, whether I'm white or whether I'm Latino or whether I'm Italian or whether I'm whatever, let me ask you something here. Could it be that the mural in question here is simply a reflection of what was seen at the time that it was printed? Is there a real good chance of that? Hey, what's up, Paul? I just saw your message. Is there a chance of that? Maybe there's no racial element here at all. Maybe they simply posted what they saw. Now, I know that sounds redundant and stupid to even have to say, but hear me out. Did you guys see the actresses and people complaining that there weren't enough black people in the Chernobyl movie? Do you know why there weren't black people in the Chernobyl movie? For the same reason that there weren't white people playing slaves in the Steven Spielberg movie about slavery. Because there weren't black people that caused the meltdown. There weren't a lot of black people cleaning off the roof. They were by and large white Russian people. I don't mean the drink, although that sounds good. Now let me ask you something. How many of you know that there was a, a disaster at um, the, uh, oh, I forget the name of the plant, in, and not a plant, uh, South America. South, uh, the, south, of the, south of the equator, they've had almost no nuclear accidents. However, they did have one incident that involved a small child being buried in a lead-lined coffin. And the reason for this was um, there were some scrappers. I don't remember if it was her parents, but I believe it was. I have not <clears throat> read about it nor seen the movie in quite some time. It was a, a very old movie. I want to say it was made in the 80s or early 90s. But it was, uh, it was never made into a major film. It, it was made into, a, I think, a made-for-TV movie somewhere in South America. And anyway... <clears throat> Scrappers got their hands on some kind of radi uh, X-ray machine, some kind of radiation, and in it was uh, a blue, a blue glowing substance. When they took it apart, because they didn't know what it was, they were just scrapping this old building out, and uh, they were trespassing. That doesn't mean they deserved what they got. And then you know the place was abandoned; nobody owned it. They were probably going to bulldoze it, so they weren't stealing off anybody. They weren't bad people. Um, they. They broke in and they took the radioactive components and, of course, took it apart and then started playing in the glow-in-the-dark, pretty bluish-green powder that they had. It was on the children's sandwiches and they were eating it and laughing that their teeth and tongue glowed. 
Yes, it was cesium or something similar. <clears throat> I think cesium. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, radiation poisoned the entire area. Many people were sick. At least one girl I remember died, again, in the coffin. They protested her even being buried in the cemetery for fear that her coffin would leak and leach radiation into the environment. The girl was thoroughly juiced. My point is, when and if Hollywood ever gets around to making a movie about this, there won't be a lot of white people in it. Do you know why? Is it because the director is probably going to hate Joe Whiting? No. It's because there weren't a lot of Joe Whiteys that were in South America where the disaster happened. But everything in our media today gets this racial twist to it that it doesn't deserve and doesn't earn. And this is another example of it. Listen to this. A historic mural dating back to 1937 was removed from a middle school in Chicago because it only showed white children and failed to reflect the school's modern day diversity. So there, this is why I have to, we're runner up here for the Dutch Cap of the Month. The school's modern day diversity was not reflected in artwork from 1937. Could that be because 1937 wasn't modern day? Why don't we take down the Mona Lisa? Because people don't dress that way any longer. Why don't we quit reading any books that were written in Latin since nobody speaks Latin anymore? This is, this is a school. The mural was taken down at Percy Julian Middle School in Oak Park after the school's Social Justice Club and Diversity Committee complained that it was upsetting to students of color. Now, common sense would say that students of color could have made their own picture and hung it right beside it, dated it from 2019 to reflect diversity. Now, that is the way common sense would come about. That's the way logic and reason and talk of progress come about. You, you show students how things have changed. I mean, hell, there may not have even been any black students in the particular, particular ice skating picture that was painted. Is that the artist's fault? If I go into a black church and there's no white people, is that their fault? I have had students approach me pointing out that this picture does not represent our student body or the diversity of Oak Park. Principal Todd Fitzgerald wrote on an email to the in an email to the staff. Well, was the student around in 1937? I can't believe I'm reading this. The mural entitled Child and Sports Winter was originally painted by Ethel Spears and was previously displayed at Laurel Elementary. This mural made students feel invisible because it doesn't reflect the current student body. If you're made invisible by a picture, then you're too stupid to be in school. Just dig a ditch and get it over with. Brittle Millen said, how can a student learn in a healthy environment when they don't feel that they are being seen because somebody painted a picture that didn't include your particular class? You know what? There aren't any white people painted at the foot of the cross because they were Jewish, Arab, or Israeli. Sudan, maybe, Jordan. That doesn't mean they didn't see me. However, David Sokol, a retired professor of American art history at the University of Illinois at Chicago, described the removal of the painting as a modern-day book burning. Thank God common sense speaks. There is nothing offensive with the mural. It just shows all white kids playing, said Sokol. Just because it doesn't have any black kids doesn't make it offensive. It doesn't display any stereotypes at all. That's how Oak Park looked back then. You can't erase history. Oh, yeah, they can. They're leftists. They're experts at it. Ask Hitler. Barbara Bernstein, the founder of the New Deal Art Registry, agreed, <clears throat> commenting, I don't think it does a real disservice 
I think it does a real disservice, excuse me, to remove a piece of historical work, said Bernstein. Not everything in your environment is going to be a perfect reflection of you. Amen. Me, 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 the me generation. Get over it. All right, friends, that does bring us, of course, to the dunce cap of the month winner. I want to remind you, friends, that you can donate to the show. It takes time to research this, compile it, mail out the dunce caps. That's more expensive than you think. If you'd like to donate, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal, and any money you give to me, I put directly into the show. I have shown receipts on this show before, along with things that have been purchased, such as the camera that I'm speaking into. It's actually a phone with an amazing camera, but uh, I, I, I do need a better camera for other things. All right. Uh, what is that I hear? There's stupidity in the air. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. What's going to win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award? Well, friends, I'd like to say up front once again that this is a matter of free speech, speech and is uh, political commentary and satire. There is no threat, no promise of harm, just simple uh, protest. Zero Hedge. Miller. Caught in another deception, key Russia link exposed as informant to US for US Ukraine. Now, before you zone out, let me explain to you what it is because it sounds like a boring news story and it's not, so just listen. The FBI knew that the person in question was a spy for the United States. They were an informant to the U.S. regarding the Ukraine. Their job, this person's job, his name is uh, Kil uh, Kilmink, Constantine Kilmink. His job was to do exactly what he was doing in Russia and or the Ukraine and to report back to the United States. That was his job. He was an American asset, not a Russian asset. That's important to understand because he was millions upon millions of your taxpayer dollars. Did you go to work today? Did you go to work yesterday? You going to work tomorrow? You're going to pay some taxes. Do, those taxes that you pay <clears throat> went to investigate somebody for connections to Russia when they were a spy whose job it was to have connections to Russia for the good of the United States. Okay, now that we're clear on what I'm talking about here. <laughs> A Ukrainian businessman painted in the... That all the FBI had to do was say that, you know, what they knew, that he... That don't investigate him, he's one of ours. A Ukrainian businessman painted in the Mueller report as a sinister link to Russia has was actually a sensitive intelligence source for the U.S. State Department, who informed on Ukrainian and Russian issues, and past messages between Washington, D.C. and Kiev. This is according to uh, The Hill, if you want another source. The writer was John Solomon. Konstantin Kilominsk, who worked for Tr the Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort, was described on page six of the Mueller report as having ties to Russian intelligence. He's a spy! Shazam, Sparky! He was cast as a sinister light as a potential threat to democracy. Mueller completely omitted the fact that Minsk was working as an informant and intermediary in between America and the Ukraine and subsequently indicted him for obstruction of justice. That's like saying that you sent a spy to spy and then condemned those who knew him for him spying and investigated him spying when you knew that he was a spy. He was not just any run-of-the-mill source either. Kinsk interacted with the 
chief political officer at the U.S. Embassy in Kiev. They knew exactly who he was on our side. Sometimes meeting several times a week to provide information on the Ukraine government to America. He relayed messages back to Ukraine's leaders and delivered written reports to U.S. officials. Via emails that stretched for thousands of words, the memos show. The FBI knew all of this well before the Mueller, the Mueller investigation concluded, according to The Hill. They knew it. The FBI knew it. Purcell described what he considered an unusual level of discretion that was taken with handling uh, Kilmink said one of the FBI interview reports that reviewed by Solomon, normally the head of the political section would not handle sources, but Kasanoff informed Purcell that Kmink was a sensitive source. Purcell told, told the FBI that Kilmink, Kil Kilmink provided detailed information about OB Ukraine's opposition bloc inner workings that sometimes was so valuable it was forwarded immediately to the ambassador. Purcell learned that other Russian governments relied on Kilmink as a source also. So he was a friend of the West. And they knew it. <clears throat> One time in a meeting with, in, with the Italian embassy, the West, Purcell heard the Italian ambassador echo a talking point that was strikingly similar to the point Kremenich had shared with Purcell, the FBI report states, according again to The Hill. As Mueller mentioned none of this in his report, despite knowing about it since 2018, more than a year before the final report. Three sources with direct knowledge of the inner workings of Mueller's office confirmed to me that the source that the special prosecutor's team had all of the FBI interviews with state officials as well as Kursk intelligence reports to the US embassy way before they portrayed him as a Russian sympathizer. Tied to Moscow intelligence charged to the committee. So The FBI knew all of this prior to the investigation. This is what we are sending to the FBI. It should also go to Mueller because they, it was derived to him much later. But here we go. The FBI is getting this fine, beautiful Dunce Cap of the Month award show. Of course, uh, Dunce Cap of the Month. There it is. It says Dunce. There is a building here. It's meant to be the FBI building. It says... I have an idea. Let us attack and investigate a man who works for Uncle Sam. The ICP. Oh, Comet Clowns. How scary. Let's remember they got the Dunce Cap of the Month award from me once before over that issue. Here's an idiot in an FBI shirt. It says, uh, we just spent millions to investigate someone for no reason. Why do citizens not trust the FBI? There's money being burnt. And there's a guy pointing a finger that says, no one burns taxpayer money like us. Of course, they're also getting this fine award. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. This Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes to the great minds at the FBI who doltishly allowed a fortune to be spent during the Mueller investigation into Constantine Kamenik even though the agency <clears throat> knew from the start that he was, for lack of a better word, a spy for the U.S. Never has the award been more earned. That's going to be mailed to them, friends, because they've earned it for wasting a fortune in our tax dollars. And that, of course, is the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show. Thank you for listening. Thank you for hitting share. And again, please donate if you can. Good night, friends. God bless. And Hey, Google people, thank you for listening.